Hi everyone, I'm Cohen from Phoenix Star YT. Welcome to my corner. And today I want to talk about how 2021 was for me. There were a fair few things that I could be talking about in this video today. I could be talking about all the wonderful memories that I managed to create this year with my friends, my girlfriend and everything else. I could talk about uh, a lot of the great things that were going on in the world, like the vaccinations going around um, and everybody getting vaccinated and everything and stuff like that. I could be talking about all of that, but part of me can't help but think about all of the bad things that happened in this year. I've known a fair few people who had a really bad time during 2021 today and it just would not feel right for me to talk about all the good things that were going on in this year when there is such a huge contrast between the good and the bad. And even if that wasn't the case, I still need to get this off my chest. 2021 has not been a good year for me. I just wanted to tell you guys how 2021 really affected me, as in how I've been mentally in the last year. The first thing that I wanted to talk about is probably the biggest thing that people are talking about right now, and that is, of course, COVID-19, coronavirus. The big thing that everybody talks about, everybody is worried about, everybody needs to have a say about it. I'm just gonna say right now that COVID-19 has been one of those things that has severely affected my mental health in a lot of ways, more than one. And it's not that the Netherlands has been going through yet another lockdown as of me recording this. We just got into another lockdown uh, as of very recent and it's affecting the Netherlands pretty badly. I know a fair few people who are severely affected by this and yeah, as you can probably imagine, every single one of us is not pleased with the decision made to go into another lockdown. It's just not going to be great for everybody's mental health. But it's not the lockdown that's affecting me as much as it is. It's not the fact that I need to wear masks every day, every single day just to go outside or whatever. It's not that I needed to get vaccinated. It's none of that. Which, for the record, yes, I do wear a mask a lot of the time and I did get vaccinated, so. Just wanted to let you know. The thing that has affected me the most this year is how COVID-19 brings out the absolute worst in people. So what do I mean by this? What I mean by this is that when people have a very strong opinion about COVID-19, they will go out their way to make people change their perspectives on COVID-19. They will change the way that they believe. They will change pretty much your entire point of view on COVID-19. Or at least they will go out of the way to attempt to do so in every way that they can. Like, nothing goes too far for these people to make, change, make you change your point of view on COVID-19. People will go as far as to manipulate each other, people will guilt trip each other, people will do anything they can within their power to do so. What it has done for me, in a lot of cases, is that it completely changes the way that I look at somebody when they go out their way to do something like this. When people go out their way to manipulate each other just to prove a point in how COVID-19 needs to be stopped in every way imaginable. You have to wear masks, you have to get vaccinated, or you are a terrible person, or you are a danger to everybody around you, or you are the cause of people dying. That's quite literally what people are saying against each other. And it totally shows just how bad some people truly are. I've seen some horrible cases like this go all over the internet. I've seen a lot of people cannibalize each other over their beliefs of COVID-19. And I have seen this kind of stuff happen more times than I ever thought I would. And it honestly is both frustrating, worrying, and it's honestly kind of depressing 
that this kind of stuff is happening. That COVID-19 doesn't just go from, oh, people are just dying from this virus, like cancer or the AIDS virus or hell, even Ebola or whatever. Coronavirus goes beyond just killing people. It changes the way that people view others in really, really bad ways. Among the worst cases that I had to deal with was people who I know personally have really bad medical conditions that they cannot take COVID-19 in the slightest. Like, they catch COVID, they die. Easy as that. And I have been frequently confronted by this. That if I don't be careful, if I don't keep my social distance, if I don't wear masks, that person will die. And it's your fault for getting them killed. Because you were the one giving them coronavirus. Do you have any idea how bad it makes people feel when you say stuff like that? Do you have any idea how terrible it is to go out your way to guilt trip somebody like that? And probably the worst thing that's ever happened to me, like the absolute worst conversation that I've ever had with somebody was when I had a conversation with someone. I'm not gonna call them by name, by the way, because I don't feel like it's in my right to do so, and I don't think it's going to help matters in the slightest if I do so. Basically what happens was I had this conversation with this person who disagreed with my point of view on why I take vaccinations, or why I even got vaccinated to begin with, or the way I see people getting vaccinated or whatever. You know, that that's the main thing. I got vaccinated and I have my reasons for why I got vaccinated. Everybody has their own reasons for why they got vaccinated. I'm pretty sure that we can all agree that um, the vaccinations are helping to some point and that they are keeping people from, at the very least, getting either severely sick from COVID-19 or even die from COVID-19. You will be able to survive COVID-19 if you catch it, if you got the vaccination. Of course, it also depends on your immune system, but that's getting into some very complicated territory and I'm not gonna dwell too much on that. Anyway, the reason why I got vaccinated was because I wanted to get it over with. And that is quite literally all there is to it. I didn't get it for my own well-being or my own benefit or for somebody else's well-being or somebody else's benefit. I refuse to say either of those. I refuse to say I'm just doing it for my own because it makes me sound incredibly selfish to do so. And I think it makes every single person who got vaccinated look incredibly selfish by saying this. Because if you're just doing it for your own benefit, there's no way around it. That's a very selfish way to look at it. At least in a lot of people's eyes. You will look incredibly selfish for a lot of people if you are to say, I got vaccinated for my own benefit. Which, honestly, is a very fair reason to get your vaccination. But, no, that's not what people like to hear. What people would like to hear is if you got the vaccination, it's because you did not want anyone else around you to catch the virus and potentially die. It is the most accepted motivation somebody could have for getting a vaccination. Why? Because you are not being a danger to somebody else if you got the vaccination. The reason why I refuse to say this is because I think that it's one of the biggest lies that we ever told to anyone. And the reason why I think that it is one of the biggest lies to ever be told to anybody is because we get pressure into saying this. We get guilt-tripped and manipulated into saying, I'm doing this for the benefit of others. I'm not doing this because I just wanted to do this. I don't get this because I wanted to protect myself. I'm doing this because I'm protecting others. And it's the one thing that everybody says to each other. Why? Not because they don't believe in it. Not because they want to protect others over themselves. They are not saying it because they want to be safe around others. They are saying it because they are pressured to. They are saying it because they are manipulated to say it. They are saying this because other people are literally 
pushing them into a corner, saying that if you don't get the vaccination, you will continue to be a danger around other people and you will cause other people to die. I literally heard some people say this and it frustrates me beyond all belief. It frustrates me that this kind of stuff is going on in the world. And it's something that I refuse to say because I think I would be lying to myself and I would be lying to other people. And I believe that there are many more people out there who do the same thing. They tell this lie to themselves and they tell this lie to everybody around them. And considering everything that I just mentioned and considering everything that is going on around the world and considering how people discussing COVID-19 has gone over the years, I don't think it's that too far-fetched that people are doing this because they are being pressured to say this. So this person I had this conversation with did not agree with my personal point of view and my personal opinions or my motivations for why I got my vaccination and they went out the way to try and change my motivation by any means necessary to the point where he would make me feel terrible for not having the same motivation as he does. It would even get to the point where he decided to just fuck our else and ignore a really bad relationship that I'm having with a really terrible person in my life who I would very much like to distance myself from but I can't because of certain things um, going on and everything but regardless of that he would just decide to ignore all of that and decide to bring up Okay, so you didn't get the vaccination because of this terrible person who is in your life right now, who is making you feel incredibly uncomfortable and you definitely do not feel at home at anymore. And he does not see any reason as to why I am extremely uncomfortable with it. He would continue to demand an answer from me. He would imply that I'm incredibly selfish for even saying I got my vaccination because I wanted to get it over with. And he would continue to manipulate me into giving him an answer that he wants to hear. Not the answer that I genuinely believed in, but the answer that he wants to hear. To give you an idea of how terrible it made me feel, it made me not want to see this person for a very long time anymore. It made me feel like I absolutely am not in the right place around there to talk with him about much of anything that is going on in my life. It made me feel like I was getting isolated. It made me feel like I... It made me feel like my personal point of view was not of importance. And his point of view was a lot more important. And I should have the same point of view as him regarding COVID-19. And it hurt me more than I could possibly describe in words. It was absolutely... And it's been a good while since I've seen him. Ever since we had that conversation. And I would very much like to keep it that way for a very very good while in advance during 2022. I do not feel like I would want to see this person again after this conversation for a very long while. And that is something that I'm a lot more shocked by than anything else. The fact that someone could make me feel so incredibly hurt, I genuinely do not want to see them anymore. That is something that nobody else has ever done to me in my life. This was a person who I once held very close to me because I always felt like he was the voice that I could go to to talk about quite literally anything. And now I feel like I can't anymore and I need to step to other people in my life to do so. Needless to say, it wasn't pretty. I'm not happy with how the conversation went and I'm most certainly not looking forward to Christmas when I have to spend Christmas with this person. It's not going to be a fulfilling Christmas, I'll tell you that much. Not gonna be fun. I have a younger sister of 17 years old who had a particular very bad time during everything that COVID-19 had to bring to her. So in our hometown, she has a lot of very good friends that she likes to hang around with a lot. She hangs out with them the majority of the time, really, um, in school, uh, during recess, and especially after school, she hangs out with them a lot. And 
It's a group of friends that make her very happy. It's a group of friends that she loves hanging out with. And COVID-19 has not been good for her mental state either. During the several lockdowns that she had to deal with, during a lot of the stuff that COVID-19 has done to a lot of people, she went from being a generally very happy girl to slowly just descending into this really dark person who I hardly even recognize anymore. She is still very much my sister. We still have a good time with each other when we can. You know, the, we have the occasional brother, sister fights and whatever, just minor things that are going on, but generally uh, we do have it good with each other. But, you know, she just is not the same person that I used to know anymore. And I think that a lot of it has to do with um, COVID-19 just taking a huge chunk from who she once was and slowly descending her into darkness. Which on its own is a very uncomfortable sight to see. But one of the worst things to ever happen to anyone, not just, not just her, not just me, but for everyone, is to lose someone you held dear to a very tragic event. I'm not gonna go over all of the details as to what was going on, but essentially she had lost uh, someone that she was close to uh, due to being hit by a train. And I'm not gonna go over how exactly all of that happened. Uh, it's a very depressing story that I have no right to tell you in the slightest in full detail, but essentially one of her friends passed away and she was incredibly sad by it and at one point she went to the location where this boy passed away uh, so she could put down some flowers and so she could say goodbye to him and it, it would be very symbolic. I was not um, around when she was there at the time. Uh, I was um, having baseball training but needless to say it did not sit right with me. It's made me feel very scared and uncomfortable and I was genuinely afraid that I would lose her too because I know how broken she was over all of it. I know how sad she was and she genuinely was incredibly depressed. I was very scared that um, she would do something that night that um, would be irreversible, that, that would be irreversible. That I would lose her right there and that I may never see her again. And it was something that was so devastating to me along with everything else that was happening at the time that I just um, could not sleep good at all that night and I just sent an email off to school and I said I'm sorry but I'm mentally exhausted. I can't get myself to go to school today. I need a little bit of time to cool down and having something like this happening is absolutely devastating it's heartbreaking it utterly kills you from deep inside to some extent having the feeling that you could lose someone at any moment because they are so incredibly sad that something terrible happened to their friends that they would just completely lose themselves and take their own lives. It happens. It happens a lot. And it's terrible to have that feeling that someone you hold dear might do that exact same thing because a friend of them did the same thing. It was the first time in my entire life that I decided that I needed some time to, to get myself to a mental state where I can go into my education with full force again and just generally feel better. It was very much a first for me in every bad way imaginable and it was... it made me feel very... very terrible. My sister is doing better now uh, ever since that whole thing happened but the COVID-19 lockdown that's coming up for us is not gonna be helping matters either. She hasn't been the best because of the announcement that uh, the Netherlands is going under lockdown again. So this next topic that I'm going to be talking about is a relatively recent one. Uh, the Phoenix Star YT hack. Because I got hacked on pretty much everything that I have. My Google accounts, 
uh, my link tree, my Discord account. My Discord account was a very big one, by the way. I lost all access to that one. And everything else uh, that just got completely destroyed by this hacker who got access to everything. So what exactly happened? Well, for one thing, I'm a naive idiot who just believes everything that he is being told on the internet. Not everything, but I am very good at heart and I am one of those kinds of people who would go out the way to help out those who ask for it. So I got contacted by a random guy on Discord who I have never seen before and they basically asked me for some feedback on a video game and the first thing that they did was send me a download link for an executable file. Uh, so I run it and immediately my Discord gets closed, uh, my Discord uh, password and my Discord email address got completely changed and I lost any and all access to it. Uh, the hacker also got uh, access to my Amazon account, my Twitter, my everything they got access to. And uh, a lot of terrible things happened on a fair few of my accounts. For one thing, uh, the hacker proceeded to uh, contact a bunch of my friends and even some people who I've never talked to before. Uh, he went ahead and contacted them and attempted to do the exact same thing to them as as he had done to me. Luckily, nobody fell for this or else they would be in a lot of trouble too. They would lose access to their Discord account too and they would have everything hacked of them as well. Uh, I managed to restore my Discord account again, so I uh, now have my old Discord account back. But the thing that I needed to do was pretty crazy. I had to make an alternative account, join as many servers that I could to warn people, do not click on any links that this person sends you. This person who hacked my account is not me, it is a hacker and you know, you get the idea. They should not click on any links that they send them. So luckily none of the people who um, uh, the hacker contacted fell for this. Um, aside from a couple of uh, people who got into a bit of trouble with it, uh, a couple of my classmates fell for it. Uh, one of them uh, lost all access to his Discord account, and I think he's um, uh, contacted Discord support and everything to see if they can help him out with it. But yeah, that was a pretty crazy um, event. Event. The hacker went out his way to hack me, uh, order Amazon accounts of uh, worth $5,000, and uh, he proceeded to do the same thing to everybody else who he uh, could get to fall for his trap. It was a pretty crazy thing that, um, that happened. So we've got a few things that are going on here. There is hacking, of course, that is the biggest thing that is going on here. But we also have a case of identity fraud and there is also something completely different that I had to deal with on my link tree. So if you don't know, I have a link tree in the description down below where I have put a bunch of different links that people can click on and they could uh, have immediate access to uh, my Twitter, to my commission sheet, to pretty much everything that they need to know uh, of the Phoenix Star YT channel. It's basically just a way to stay connected to Phoenix Star YT and to stay connected to me. And because the hacker also had access to my link tree, the thing that he could also do was change around the links a little bit so he could do something completely different in those links. So the thing that he would put on those links were horrific images of people being, we'll say, annihilated, okay? There was a lot of blood, a lot of gore was in these images that he put in the link tree. And because it's under my name, it's under the Phoenix Star YT brand, people would think that it was me who forwarded them through Linktree to those images. And it was a really terrifying thing to look at. I did not get too much of the detail of uh, what those images are, luckily, but there were some people who contacted me through, the, uh, through Discord who told me that I needed to change this 
very quickly because people are going to see this if they click those links and they would think that it was me who put those links there. For the record, it wasn't me putting those links up there. But yeah, I fixed the links. The link tree is completely fixed now. So you can go to my link tree in the description down below and you can still check out my commission sheet and everything that's on there. So now there are a few things that I can do with this incredible event of uh, hacking. So I reported the identity fraud thing to the police uh, a little while ago. Way before um, the Linktree thing happened, by the way, or before I even noticed that Linktree was um, was changed. So, I have something to add to my uh, identity fraud story, which is, of course, the whole gore thing in my Linktree and everything. I got a lot to tell the police uh, regarding the hack. It's going to be very interesting. But yeah, needless to say, the hack was a pretty terrible event for me as well, especially because... I literally felt like I could do absolutely nothing about this um, when all of this happened. Uh, people were gonna um, get contacted by this hacker. They were to get sent the exact same link that I got sent. And they were going to fall for this. They are going to click it. And people are going to think that I completely uh, screwed them over uh, by sending them these links and everything and by hacking them. People are not going to be happy about any of this. And so I I felt like I had absolutely no foot to stand on during all of it. It felt terrible. It felt genuinely horrifying to be in this kind of situation. I'm quite grateful that the majority of people that this hacker contacted under my name did not fall for this or else they would be in a lot of trouble because of some thing that happened on my accounts because they were receiving DMs under my name and uh, it was not pretty. Eventually I did manage to get everything restored. Uh, I now have full access again to my Discord accounts. Uh, a bunch of um, uh, passwords I needed to switch around and everything. Uh, I do feel like I'm a lot more secure than I was uh, when the Discord hack happened, but yeah, um, it generally just was not a very good thing for this to happen and I'm glad that I have everything restored now and that I don't have to worry about it too much anymore, but still it was a very rough time. With all of that, 2021, I think you can very much imagine how this year felt for me. It was exhausting, it was really bad and at one point for me it was even depressing. Uh, there are some minor things that happened this year, like some stuff that was going on in school. Uh, those were, those are very minor details to me, honestly. Um, just having some bad time with um, with some classmates of mine and stuff like that. Nothing um, too out of the ordinary. Those are very regular old stuff that um, could happen to literally anybody. So I'm not gonna be going into too much detail there, but yeah, um, this was just some of the really bad stuff, some of the stuff that affected me more than anything else this year. And honestly, um, my hopes are not gonna be high for 2022. I'm hoping that the year is going to be a little bit better than this year was for me. Uh, I'm hoping that I can at the very least improve my mental state a little bit more than it has been this year. But like I said, I'm not gonna keep my hopes too high because I don't want to get severely disappointed when it does. Anyway, despite everything that happened, uh, I have had a pretty decent year editing for Phantom Strider. I've had a decent year on the Phoenix Star YT channel. And I just wanted to thank you for the incredible year that I've had on Phoenix Star YT. It's been a really fun year. I have some more ideas of um, stuff that I wanted to create on the Phoenix Star YT channel for 2022. So that is going to be a lot of fun and I definitely am going to continue uh, editing for channels like Phantom Strider and I'm hoping I can get starting to edit for Quentin Reviews next year. Which is going to be very interesting, very fun. I cannot wait to get started with that. Anyway, that's been it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had a decent 2021, at least better than I did. Thank you very much for watching and I see you in the very next video. This is Phoenix Star YT signing out. Take care and stay passionate.